What's up guys, Wix here again. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about my steel wide front WRX guards. Let's do it. Hey guys, what's up? So, steel wide front guards for WRX. I'll talk to you a little bit about the history on how I got onto the decision about making some steel wide guards instead of just buying the kit. So, originally I did buy the fiberglass 22B a replica kit. Um, I ended up using the rear quarter panels, they went on sweet as, but the fronts I had a nightmare with. Uh, the main issues were none of the tabs around the doors, none of those lined up. The park light had a huge gap in it and there's no way I could fill that. And also uh, the bolt holes that are inside on the engine bay side, none of those lined up as well. I did spend some time on one guard, I, I'm a, I can do mild fiberglassing, so I did sort out the tabs around the door, I managed to do the holes on the engine bay side, but that park light was pretty stuffed and it was the same on both guards. So I ended up chucking those away, uh, it was just a waste of time. Um, what I ended up doing was using my standard uh, WRX guards and I ended up flaring them, so I'll just show you what they look like. So what I'll do is, uh, this is my old factory guard that I've flared out. What I'll do is I'll chuck it on and just show you what it, what it looked like. Okay, so this is my factory guard, and if you can see that. So what I've done is I kind of flared it right on this arch, way up here and all the way down here. Um, now what I used is a, I tried all the tricks off YouTube, phone box, big metal pipe. None of those did the trick, not wide enough anyway. Uh, so I ended up pretty much jacking the car up, putting it on jack stand and getting the hammer and beating the hell out of it. And then putting a bit of bog over it to make it smooth on top. Um, if you can see right down there, definitely made it a whole lot wider, uh, but, but not wide enough. So when I went around a corner with a bit of speed, it would rub on these tires. When you're going straight, they were sweet as, but uh, still not happy with it because I just didn't want any rubbing whatsoever. So when I first bought this Subaru, one of the first mild modifications that I made uh, was the wheels. Um, and the only reason why I got these particular wheels is there was a really good special on them at the time, along with the tires. So these are diesel D1R wheels. They are a 18 by 9 wheel and it's got a really aggressive offset with a positive 15, hence why they stick out quite wide. So obviously a little bit disappointed that first of all the fiberglass guns were just all out of weight. Um, second I gave it a really good go just to flare the standard steel guard. It was okay but just, just not quite enough. Hence why I've moved on to my attempt to still use a steel guard, but make it a wide, a wide guard. So what I did is I went and grabbed another pair of front steel fenders 
and this time I wanted to try and keep it steel but make it a wide fender. Like I said, I, I do mild fiber glassing, so I probably could have went down the road of what most other people do, do the foam thing, get your shape, then fiberglass it after that. But I wanted to try and keep it steel. Uh, really disappointed with the fiberglass 22B kit that I originally got. Just didn't line up tabs all out. Um, I was slightly happier with my factory guard that I made with the, with the flared, flared bit down the bottom. Um, but as I just showed you, not quite enough. So I wanted to make a proper wide guard, but keep it steel. Not being a welder myself, or not actually doing any, any modifications like this before. I didn't really know how to attack it, but uh, another good mate of mine, Toby, who did all the welding for my guards, he gave me a couple of ideas, so I'll just run over with you about the type of, how we sort of attacked it to, to get us a wide guard. So what we did is we, I made a cut from here, roughly about this area, all the way along that line. And I made a cut down here as well. Which made this part in two pieces. So that was the top part, still bolted to the car. This part was now separate. Then I made a, another cut just under this little groove, this groove part in the fender. So I just made a cut straight, straight under there, straight line, and now I had three pieces. Um, this part here on the WRX has one little bolt just behind the door here, so that I could bolt that piece up. This part at the top stayed where it was, that was bolted up, so this middle section was out was not connected in any way. So the idea was to bring this middle section out as far as I wanted to. Uh, this little flap that I cut off, I made another cut all the way, almost to the end, but not quite. I pulled that part out a little bit, and then with tape and cardboard, I put my middle section here, so it kinda, it kinda all matched nicely, got my gap, and then I taped it with cardboard um, and that was pretty much the general shape of what I was going to do um, and then from there I got some one mil steel we did a bit of modifying to the steel and we basically just filled in all the gaps and made it work so. So, so far, this is our pretty much finished welding result. I think it looks like crap at the moment, uh, but it is starting to shape together real nice. Um, you'll notice that my wheel is a bit crooked and that's because I need a major wheel alignment. That one's out. So this one should be straight. If I put the guard on properly. And that wheel is pretty straight. <clears throat> so we've just got a couple of pinholes, pinholes that we need to weld up and then we're gonna hit the hit the bogging process. Oh Bogging and sanding, bogging and sanding, and repeat about a million times. But at least now it looks like a frickin' guard. Okay, so as you saw in the last part, it started to bog, 
bulk and sand, bulk and sand, and anyone who's done any panel, custom panel work would probably know that when it gets to that stage, that is, I hate sanding with a passion. Um, and it's the worst part, it's the worst stage to ever do. Um, so that's what I've been doing for the last day or two. Bog and sand, bog and sand, bog and sand. Um, finally, I'm up to this stage. Where I can pretty much put my first coat of primer on. Um, and there you have it. So I've got some really good shape now, got a nice smooth curve through here. Everything feels good. I've bogged around the, um, the indicator. That fits in there nice and snug, especially around the rubble seal here. Um, it, just, it just fits in really nice. So I'm really happy with that. So I'll probably still need to bog and sand it a little bit more. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna going to get a coat of primer on it and hopefully that will highlight any little pinholes that I need to smooth out. Um, I can still feel a couple of bumps just in this area so hopefully when I primer it it will highlight that as well. I have got some of that uh, the black powder that you chuck on and sand and anything that's left over shows you a low spot. I did try some of that but it's just just doing weird stuff so hopefully when I primer it it might highlight some stuff so what I'll do is I'll get a coat of primer on this and then uh, show you what it looks like after that. Got it primed. It's still, it's a, a quick drying, really easy sanding primer. So it's it's pretty much almost dry, and it's pitch black outside. I've just switched lights because my garage lights, the LED lights, they mess with my GoPro and they they flicker and stuff. So I've just switched to another light just to kind of highlight the guard without it flickering. So paint is almost dry, but it'll still I'll leave it overnight and it'll be sweet by the morning. So one primer guard. So what I try to do was make, if I can get that shot, the widest part of the guard sort of in line with the rim. I think this wheel's a little bit crooked. <clears throat> I think that's how we tacked it up, but I think it still kind of went in a little bit. Still a lot happier though because the thing that was annoying me about the flare is that only the edge was outside but it, because it was flared it was quite low whereas this is quite straight so the wheels, the edge of the tyres when I lower it or when I sit it down it's got room to move upwards. But um, yeah starting to take some good shape now so Really stoked about that. There's uh, heaps of tiny pinholes that you probably can't see in the camera. So I'll still need to do a little bit more bogging and tidying up. But so far, so far, I'm pretty happy. So I call this design the step back design, where it steps back. I don't know if that's what you call it. I just made that up. Um, and I'll just talk to you a little bit about the um, about the plate and the words on the back so initially I was just going to put some mesh in there like most people would do but I've got another handy mate at ease who works at a powder coating place and they have he's got access to a water jet cutter so I thought I'd put the the obvious STI wording in there and this is my brand for my apparel AWC it's almost 
the acronym for my vehicle wrapping business, Auto Wrap Customs as well. So just a kind of a personal touch where normally that would just be just mesh. Um, just with my mate having access to the water jet, I thought, oh, I'll just do something different. So that's pretty much the passenger front guard done. What I'll do is um, I'll turn the lights back on and go. So one other quick thing I just want to mention is the other reason why I wanted to keep the factory look is that from the side here, I think you can see that down the camera, but it almost looks like it's just a factory guard and not wide at all. And, and that's what I wanted um, until you hit the side of the car and then you'll notice it sticks out a whole lot and same with the front. I'll just see if I can get a front shot. So that's the other guard on the side. Not yet primed. So it's def definitely got a more aggressive look now. And somehow the factory version 5 6 bumper just happens to bolt on the same and I can't work that out why but I'm not going to question it it just works and I'm stoked with that so what I'll do to finish tonight off is I will go ahead and primer that other guard let them set overnight tomorrow um, you guessed it more sanding bogging sanding bogging and I will get it up to the paint stage um, also if I get some time tomorrow I'll drop the car back down and I'll pull the car outside and I'll also go over with you about the, the rear quarter panels and, and the work I did to make those wide as well. Alrighty, so I finally got this car out of the shed. Um, and these are, so far, these guys are about 90 to 95% finished. Um, this one's not fully bolted up yet. I've got my bonnet in as well, so you can see how it lines up. But um, pretty much finished guards. Almost, almost ready, ready for a paint. So I'm really stoked with this. As I mentioned before, it's a steel guard that has that's pretty much has all the bolt holes in the factory position. Um, it's just the middle section that we've cut out and extended so From the side it almost looks like just a normal guard But uh, as you can tell They're pretty wide wide enough to meet my wheels anyway, so I'm stoked with that. Hopefully the whole aim of this was to first of all not have any scrapes while I'm driving and um, and hopefully the positive from that is that I end up with a more aggressive look as well. So what I'll do now is I'll just chuck my bumper on over there and uh, we'll see what it looks like with that on as well. That's uh, bumpers just sitting there. So that's probably the gist of what the front will look like when she's all done. So straight away I can tell that I definitely need some sort of front lip on this. Uh, that's a little bit too high for me. Um, something I can sort out later, but for now, this is when you look at stuff like this. This is the type of stuff where I start getting really really excited about finishing this project so I'm really stoked with that so what I'll do now is I'll get the car ready to go to my mate Sticks um, who's going to do all the fab work for the turbo and the extractors and all that stuff so happy that I got it to the stage 
on to the next one. So these guards are pretty much 90 to 95, 96, maybe 97 percent finished. Um, I needed to get them on the car because the car is going tomorrow to my mate Sticks, who's going to do all the fab work, get the turbo in, extractors and wastegates in, and my new dump pipe for my exhaust. So needed to put it back together. I'll finish those off probably right before I go and paint them. Um, but man, just happy to get them on the car got my bonnet on the gap in between is actually not too bad all the way up which it should be it is a factory guard um, but you just never know lines up pretty good um, I think when I when I go to bolt the bumper up I think it's gonna match per perfectly even though I've extended it out so I'm pretty confident that that'll just bolt up straight away um, you can tell I definitely need some sort of front lip that's way too high for me um, and I probably can't lower the car anymore before stuff on under, the stuff underneath starts scraping on the ground so but so far um, I'm really stoked I've got some guards remember the whole point of doing this was number one I hated scraping on my tires when going around a corner or just anywhere really um, two I wanted to keep the factory look which if we look from the side it kind of pretty much does so happy about that indicator sweet it all just bolts up like a normal factory guard like it should really so I'm stoked with that um, so as mentioned earlier I can't remember if I did or not but I have got rear guards on the back as well um, but they are fiberglass guards so what I did with these guards is most people just bolt it on the outside but uh, what I've done is I've kind of blended it in with the rest of the car so you might be able to see it in my self taught paint job which is going to get sorted out as well but there was a join here and I've just put some filler in here to blend it in with the car and I think when I got the kit it ended about roughly about here but it ended up in a thin piece and I couldn't figure out how to how do you make it just join the car without without making it seem seamless so what I've end, ended up doing was it might have come a bit more than that what I've ended up doing is putting some filler on this guard and also on the door and then I've just blended it so hopefully you can see it it just gives just a smooth transition so most people just bolt it on the outside and put some screws in it so you can see all the screws but I didn't want that I wanted it I wanted it to look like it's just a part of the car and that's what it does at the moment so I was really happy with those rear guards but like I said when the front ones turned up they just didn't line up at all and they were just a nightmare so now I have steel wide front fenders Okay guys, that's it for this episode for my steel wide WRX fenders. If you're keen to keep an eye on this build, um, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, in the next episode, I'll probably talk about, I need to get some gear in the engine bay before it goes off to get some fab work. So what I might do is uh, I need to get the intake in, I'll sit the turbo in, the intercooler, and I'll just give you a rough breakdown on how I'm going to design my engine bay so that'll be in the next episode currently here in New Zealand we've dropped down to what they call a level 3 lockdown for the COVID stuff which means some of us can go back to work um, so that's what I'll be doing today as well um, so next one lined up for work at the moment is this Mitsubishi Evo 10 um, I will be doing a full wrap on this so I'm not sure but I think this is this is either four or five hundred kilowatts um, I'm not too sure but he's got some new guards on there white uh, rear wide fenders on the back um, and, and you don't really see this bumper on most of the Evos as well anyway 
doing a full wrap on that and I'm doing it in this colour here which is a pearl gloss white um, so if you're keen on wrapping stuff keep an eye out for that video as well otherwise we'll see you in the next episode peace